What is up guys, it is the Gaming News Stuff here. First off, I apologise for not posting heaps of videos lately. I have been incredibly sick, dying on the couch and whatnot, and I'm actually making this video because I want to be able to make videos for you guys. Still a bit ill, if you can't tell from my voice, but I'm gonna try and push for it for you. And also, another little quick thing -o that I wanted to mention, got a haircut, and I want to try and keep these videos, these Styles Gate Superheroes videos, a bit more PG with the whole new YouTube guidelines and whatnot. And also, I know a lot of younger people watch these videos, so I want to try and clean it up a little bit for you. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into the third installment in what seems to be my most popular videos on this channel, which are the five characters you should farm. Now, I've got another five characters here that I want to recommend you farm. So, let's jump straight into it. First off, we have someone that's really true to my heart at the moment. I use him as my leader, and he's great. We have Jedi Knight Anakin. Now, if you guys have not seen any of the previous videos, I have covered 10 other characters, so make sure to go check them out before saying that these characters aren't the best, because I do cover a bunch of other characters in those videos. So, this is Jedi Knight Anakin. As we all know, Anakin Skywalker. Now, let's go over his abilities. We have Deft Blade Work. Deal physical damage to target enemy with a 70% chance to inflict healing and buff immunity for two turns. Reckless Assault. Deal physical damage to all enemies. For each enemy critically hit, 25% chance for all allies to gain offense up for two turns. For each enemy not critically hit, 20% chance Anakin to become exposed for two turns. So, double-edged sword. Sometimes you may benefit your entire team. Sometimes you may hurt Anakin, but it's kind of worth the risk. Always on the offensive, which is the leader ability. Jedi and clone allies gain 30% offense and 20% critical damage, and other allies gain half that amount. Whenever an ally is evaded, they gain advantage for two turns, which is pretty sweet. And finally, Righteous Fury. Whenever another ally falls below 50% or is defeated, Anakin gains 100% turn meter, and his next attack deals 75% more damage, which, as we can see just from reading that, is awesome. Now I'm going to show you where to find Anakin. You can find him in 5B Hard Dark Side, 5C Hard Light Side, and if you can get all the way to the end of the squad cantina battles yes that's what it's called um you can farm him in battle 7g neutral which i will show you right now is literally right oops, seven right at the end this took me a while to beat but when i beat it farming anakin became incredibly easy okay next up in the number two these aren't in order but Anakin's number one, honestly. So, after this point, it's not in order. Okay. Number two, we have Biggs Darklighter. This guy, I have not had him for very long, so I don't have him geared up much, but I can already tell he's freaking awesome. So, we have Cadet's Aim. Deal physical damage to target enemy with a 50% chance to gain critical chance up for two turns. On a critical hit, grant a random ally critical damage up for two turns. Yes, I said the word damage and critical too many times in that sentence, but that's his basic attack. Comrade in arms, deal physical damage to target enemy and call an assist. If Wedge Antilles is present, he also assists. All attacks have 75% more critical chance. So... In other words, if you use this attack with Wedge Antilles on your team, you'll get a double assist. That is so much damage, it is unbelievable. If you've got them all maxed out, that's going to destroy people. And finally, Adrenaline Rush. Biggs Darklighter gains 80% turn meter and evasion up for 3 turns after surviving any damage from an Empire enemy or a critical hit from any enemy. So that is awesome. If he gets hit by any Empire enemy or a critical hit and he doesn't die, he gets a ton of turn meter and avoids attacks heaps. That's awesome. So number two, we, in number two spot, we have Biggs. I'm going to show you where you can farm Biggs. 
sorry about that. So, first off, Battle 3G, Neutral, which is Squawk Cantina, and Battle 4A, Hard Dark Side. And the main place to farm him is in the Galactic War shipments right here. As you can see, we have him sitting right there for 400 for 5. So, really quick and easy way to farm him. Now, number 3. We actually have another rebel character there's actually three rebel characters on this list because they've introduced them kind of made them obviously more important now with the events and stuff so sorry about the coughing we have princess leia now princess leia hair trigger deal physical damage to target enemy with 55 percent chance to attack a second time standard you know a lot of attack people have bonus attacks and 40% chance to attack a third time. That's possibly three attacks straight up on one enemy. If she's maxed, she will destroy them. So that is an awesome standard ability. Rebel Tactics. Gain stealth and 25% critical hit damage for three turns. In addition, 40% chance to gain offense up for three turns. Again, absolutely awesome buffs herself like crazy and becomes unhittable which is awesome the leader ability rebel allies gain 13 percent critical chance obviously this goes up because i don't have it maxed out but that's pretty good if you're running a rebel team and against all odds whenever princess leia attacks she has a 55 percent chance to grant all allies critical chance up for two turns and a 40 percent chance to recover 5% of her maximum health. That is awesome as just a random ability. You know, you might randomly get 55% chance to grant all allies critical chance up for two turns. That's awesome. That is absolutely awesome. So the place to farm Leia, she was kind of recently added in here. She used to be a pay to play only player uh, character, but you can farm her here now in the squad arena store. And again, five for 400, easy, quick farming. Sorry, I'll try and cut that out. Now, in number four, the next two characters I actually don't have yet, but really want to farm. I have, I'm also not including characters that are pay to play or whatever, because I know a lot of people aren't pay to play, including me. So next up, we actually have, where is my boy? Wedge Antilles. You may have seen this coming with the big Dark Fighter and mentioning how good it is with Wedge, but I'm currently farming Wedge, so let's look at Wedge. I said Wedge way too many times there. Focused Fire. Deal physical damage to target enemy and inflict defense down until the end of Wedge's turn. Next turn. This attack deals 25% more damage to target suffering defense down. So basically, if he hits someone, and then hits them again. He does a ton more damage to them, which is awesome. You just keep, that's why it's called focus fire. You keep your fire focused on one enemy. Red Squadron Strike, which sounds incredibly good. Deal physical damage to all enemies. This attack deals 25% more damage to empire enemies or enemies with 50% health or more. So if you hit this attack off straight away, as soon as you start, then it'll deal a ton of damage because all the enemies will be above 50% health and it'll just do heaps. So I'm not sure if the 50% health, sorry, the 25% more damage stacks on Empire enemies. If it's 25% because they're above 50% and 25% because they're Empire. If that's the case, no Empire enemies stand a chance. But that is still an awesome attack either way. Next up, Rebel Heroism. Rebel allies have 10% offense, recover 10% of their max health, and 10% turn meter on a critical hit, and recover 20% of their max health whenever they defeat an enemy. So, if your team does something right, they get rewarded like crazy. Now, just remember, these are all only the level 1 versions of these attacks. So if you get them up to level 7 or whatever, they are going to do so much for your team, so much damage and everything. And finally, we have Red Leader. Wedge has plus 7% offense 
and plus three speed for each ally with full health and plus nine speed for each ally without full health including defeated allies if big's dark ladder isn't present he also gains these bonuses again this is the two characters working together so if you've got both of them on a team that's going to do crazy things for your team you get they're going to both be buffed up they're going to get assist damage and everything so that is awesome and he can only be farmed in battle 6f neutral in the squad arena no yes maybe squad cantina battles now last but not least as i said another character that i don't have but i'm gonna recommend to farm is the b2 super battle droid now this guy again like with wedge has just been added as a farmable character so we can get him which is awesome <laughs> heavy arms is the first attack deal physical damage to target enemy and inflict evasion down for two turns pretty simple but pretty sick mow down this art is awesome i'm just gonna say this art in the middle is awesome deal physical damage to all enemies and dispel all positive status effects on them with a 50 percent chance to also inflict buff immunity for two turns so if you use this attack and you've got a ton of buffed up teammates because you've got a yoda or whatever on the team you just get rid of everything every single buff it gets taken away that is amazing because your team might, your enemy team might rely on buffs. There's some teams that I've seen that can get up like 10 buffs and you're like, what am I gonna do? You bring in a super battle droid and you take them all down in one hit. That is amazing. And Reckless Barrage. Now B2 has a 20% chance to gain 100% turn meter whenever another ally is evaded or damaged by an, by an attack. Now again, this is only level 1, so when it gets to level 7, it may be a 50% chance. Which means that your B2 battle droid will get to attack a lot. He'll be attacking like 2, maybe 3 times every turn, which is awesome. And he can be farmed right next to Wedge in 6D neutral. So guys, that was another 5 characters I recommend you farm. Again... I've done two of these videos already, so make sure to go check them out before commenting on this video. But make sure to let me know what characters you'd recommend farming. Try to avoid pay to play and event characters because they're kind of a bit different and not farmable characters as much. So I didn't include Palpatine or Cody or any of that. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like hopefully i'll be better soon so that i can keep bringing you guys videos like this because i love making them and you guys love watching them and peace out